the shits podcast where we are either shooting the shit, starting some shit, or picking up where the shit left off, baby. It's just us. It's just us. We I'm your host, shit. Monsoon Stara, the coolest catch you heard thus far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Bubba Ball, one of the dreads. You can't catch up the mall unless it's a outlet mall. Gotta get some deals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's just us up in here this week. And we uh we're gonna be shooting the shit. So we we appreciate anybody tuning in. Everybody that been tuning in, them subscribers been going up. We definitely yeah, appreciate that yeah. shit. The numbers is going up, and I'm telling you like this though. We don't do it for the numbers, y'all. We do it because it's just like it's just what we like to do. Real shit. I'm the real. Keeping it real. Doing. Keeping it a it's buck. The, it's the shit, isn't it? A thousand. Keeping shit ten thousand. Fuck a thousand. We we start some new shit. We keeping shit ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yo. So, uh, I got to get some shouts out real quick, man. Shout out to my radio, Chicago, powered by Support District Radio. Y'all can catch us on uh, every Thursday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. every Thursday yes. on my radio, Chicago. Yo, y'all got to tune in to the, to the radio station, period, because there's some dope personalities on there. My sure. man, Shy Blizz, my girl, China, my boy, Devour. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's a lot of, lot of dope personalities. Ma. Radio Chicago, Support District Radio. Y'all can right. download that app. Also, hit us up on the Block 105 Radio, www.block105.com. Every Friday, 9, 9 a.m. And hit up the website, theshitspodcast.com. You can see the YouTube videos, uh, direct link to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, the Snapchat link, everything. Any, It's a one-stop shop. Anything you want to know about the shits, go to the website, theshitspodcast.com. Also, independent artists, you want to get your shit played, hit up dope music shits at gmail.com. Send them MP3s. Send them mm-hmm. MP3s. Make sure they they high quality. And if it's dope, you know what I'm saying, we're, we're, well, you know what, sometimes. Sometimes we play whack shit. I mean, you know. <laughs> We just give everybody the opportunity to get their music heard. You never know who might like it. You exactly. Know what I mean, just because we don't like it, or you know, we ain't playing it in our cars and shit or whatever. Somebody go like it. Trust. Exactly. Me. It ain't honestly, y'all. It ain't even up to us to save your shit yeah. up or not. It really ain't. You know what I'm saying? We just trying to give y'all the opportunity for y'all shit to get hurt. You know what I'm saying? So dope music shits at gmail dot com. Y'all hit it up. Send it and send MP three. Yeah, yeah, we're a ball, man. Yo. How your week been, man? Ah, uh, the week was kind of fucked up, you know, the beginning part and shit. Got some bad news. One of the little guys and shit I, I kind of grew up with and uh, mentored and shit out at, at Mom's crib and shit. You know, got uh, got moked out, man. They cashed him out down in Tallahassee. And um, we still ain't found out exactly why, but, you know, it's kind of fucked up. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, man, you know, you, you know these little cats, man, from 9, 10 years old. They make it to their 30s. You know, I think he was just at 30, 29, right around that area. Wow. And, and the saddest part about this shit, man, is, you know, he had a shorty, he had a little daughter. Uh-huh. And uh, that's what that's what kills me about all you guys, man, that's, that's out here doing things that, you know, you know ain't beneficial to your family. And, um, you know, just stop flashing your money, too. That That's not smart. I know he was that a shit. big money flasher, you know. Not, not, you know, I can't tell nobody what to do. All I can tell y'all is learn from what's going on out here. This ain't no... Um, time where you can floss what you got out here to people who might not have that, you know, right. and they might want that. So you never know who's looking at you, you know, as a target, and you, you know, you creating enemies and don't even know it. And it could be people that know you. That's the saddest part too. So you know, yeah. uh, rest in peace, Tevin Thomas, man. You know, that was, that was my little shorty, man. He used to come outside fresh as hell, man. He was a little fresh nigga all his life too. So. Man, that rest was in another, peace. Yeah, man, rest in peace, man. But other than that, man, everything was pretty good. You know, uh, got to talk to the babies and shit. You know, thank God for iPhones, you know, because if you can't see them physically, you can at least talk to them and see them face to face on that. So, yeah, everything was good, man. I ain't Other than that, man, you know, just, just dealing with life. Got to go to the Bulls game. Ah, Checked out the Bulls yeah. yesterday, so that was a good highlight. You it know what I mean? Special, it was some special guests in the house, too, wasn't it? Oh, man. You know, we had Joe King, Noah came, you know, and a lot of other uh, people that, that was there. Older, they retired his jersey. Older, yeah. And old, we had some older people that was in there, older NBA um, guys that was in there. They wasn't all that good, but some of them was good. <laughs> Said it wasn't all nah, you know, because the, the, you remember the names, but you was like, ah, oh, and, and Nathan asked you, you know, players like that, shit yeah, like I don't that. Even so, remember that. you know, but uh, definitely Joe King Noah got a really good shout out to Joe King Noah, the Noah's Ark Foundation, man. He he doing really some some things that uh that's that's remarkable and honorable. Uh, anytime you helping out 
youth, young black boys and, and young girls in Chicago, and you're not from here, but you got yeah. the love to do that shit, bro, I applaud anybody. So definitely give Joe King Noah, you know, a shout out, man. He was a hell of a player while he was here. Never did nothing bad besides smoking weed, so I applaud that. Ain't bad. You know, right? That's what they. That's what they so called <laughs> got him on smoking weed on the beach. Shit. Like, come on, man. This is Chicago. Come this on, is Joakim man. Noah. So, right. How was your week, bro? Uh, man, it was cool, bro. I can't complain, man. Um, damn, I'm trying to see, uh, man, what I get into. I mean, we you know we did the radio show yesterday. That was cool, man. Yeah. Hey, yo, shout out to our girl Michi, man. Hope, yeah, every, hope, hope everything is going sure, uh, is, is cool with you. You know what I'm saying? Get in tune with us. Um, other than that, man, just really just honestly just planning, bro. This week for me, uh, touching bases with Rhymester. Get ready for Magoo's no bad spot, man. Bro, we got a surprise for y'all, man. I think everybody going to be surprised by this shit. Bro, it's just all this week, man, just with... With the radio station, with the podcast, man, and just with planning this this shit coming up on November 6th, man. It's been busy, bro. It's been real busy. But I got to give a shout out, man. I got to give a huge shout out to Rhymster, man, for- uh, The governor. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fucking governor. Rhymster's the governor. That's what I'm calling him. All wet. I got to give a shout out to him, man, for just helping with all this shit, man, and just the planning that he putting into it, man. And, man, and just, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, dude, it's, it's, it's dope as fuck, man. He showed me the spot over in Magoo's, man. And it's and it's it's gonna be lovely, man. It's gonna be real lovely. So just planning it, you know, reaching out to people, getting the word out, and let them know that uh, November sixth, the Shits Podcast will be taping live at Magoo's, sixty five fifty South Menard Avenue. Hey, starting doors open up eight p.m. and it's gonna go until. Yeah, we don't know when we don't know when we don't know when it's gonna be over with. I'm man. taking a motherfucking power nap. I'm powering up. Man, listen. I'm gonna be red D, nigga. V eight, all that shit. So that's what that's that's what I really been on this week. Man, Durs might get up. some Angolan fries. What's the fries, Durs? Fries Angoli. Garlic Ooh, oh, garlic I think I had Aioli. them before. I think I had them before. And it's, it's, right, it's right around the corner. From two. Uh, we definitely going, Durs. We don't, hey, we going. Oh, okay. We okay. going. We got to pop in. Ooh. Show some, man, show some support. Show some love for some good damn food. Man, bro. Quit playing. Healthy food, you know, good for the body. Come on, man. That That's should do I'm something about. to you, man. That should do something. Shout out to Jaja Smith, man, because uh, she <laughs> she inquired about your, your diet, man. She she She's concerned, man. She want to make vegan. sure that she cooking up that vegan shit for you. That give was us, dope. Give us something. We gonna, matter of fact, we're gonna, I'm gonna shoot out Give there. us some plant based. Shoot out to uh, shoot out to day twenty one. Uh, when we Tonight get, also, when yeah. we get done with them. So. Also, shout out to my man uh, DJ Cheese. DJ Cheese birthday, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Got this thing go. Oh, hold on, bro. Shout out to my man Axes, bro. It's his birthday today. Axe, you know what I'm saying? Axe, yeah, Birth, man. Yo. ATL zone. He down there holding it down, doing his thing. Man, I seen the pictures, bro. He posted that sh- the pictures and shit, man. It's, it's looking nice, man. Yeah, it's all about wish, the paper. Wish, wish it could have been an ATL uh, tonight for that, man. That should have been dope as fuck. would have been epic. All about the paper. Yeah, all yeah, about yeah. the paper. Anyway, man. Yo, yo, so with all the partying and stuff that's going on, you know, Halloween is is, is amongst us. Okay. I want to say, what, in two days? Yeah. Two days. I started thinking about it, bro. Like, What's the most memorable Halloween costume party you ever been to? Hmm. Memorable Halloween costume party. I've been to several Halloween parties that motherfuckers got kind of dressed up in. Like the best outfit that I remember seeing somebody wear was, believe it or not, the the fucking uh, Karate Kid. Where he had what? The shower. He had the fucking shower pole with the shower joint. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was dope. To me, that was like dope as fuck. I played it cheap. I just went and like got a flannel shirt and uh, <laughs> wore some work jeans. My real work boots had like my, my construction belt from um, carpentry school. Yeah. Like, my first belt, not not a lot of real tools, like a hammer and some motion. I didn't want to be weighted down for real. Yeah. And had my hard hat on. And they entered me in the prize in that motherfucker because I had it like so a real hard hat on. So what did you say? You said you was just coming as what? What was your, what was your costume? I was just a construction worker. Cause you know I didn't I didn't really believe in it like yeah. that you know what I mean to go out and like buy some shit uh, yeah okay okay hey yo we gotta take a break real quick man we come right back hey yo shout out to everybody out there that went and got a uh, Halloween costume and uh, couldn't go outside because your car got fucked up so you was in the house with a costume on it's the shit <laughs> or boots <laughs> this comedian Marnie P checking in from the shits podcast. Right, <laughs> 
was scary as fuck Halloween because that was like BD sacrifice day. <laughs> so the BDs used to ride around like kidnap them up. That's why Vans was Are like, you serious? yeah, nigga, man, Vans wasn't good. Boy, the BDs would hop out on your ass, put you in there. <laughs> we are back at the shit spot. Tell you, beat your ass. Hey man, we just talking about uh, it, yeah, that was that was. <laughs> That was scary as fuck, man. Bro. That for a motherfucker just hop out of a van and kidnap we, your ass. We would always be in groups anyway. Like, you know, growing up, you was yeah. always told to be in groups and shit. Yeah, especially anyway. on Halloween. Motherfuckers, you know, snatch your ass and yeah. shit. So on Halloween, it was always cold and rainy. Like like now, the weather is right now and shit, right? Yeah. So Halloween was always like one of them days. You know, it'd either be cold or rainy or it'd just be kind of cool and shit, right? It was mm. never a good day. And shit, we would always just have egg fights. You know, the egg I used to love that shit, bro. You know, for us in the hood, you get your little couple dollars and basically buy out the motherfucking corner store. They made so much money on eggs, selling eggs them times because, you know, they buy them from the grocery store, which is like 65 cent back then, and they was selling them to us for like a dollar fifty. Yeah. So what shorty didn't have five dollars, three, four dollars, and then you ante up with your guys, and y'all finna battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was kind of, that, that was always cool. But that yeah. shit was all fine and dandy until they get hit in the face with an egg. And then you, then you want to steal on them motherfucker. Bro, an egg, you got to think, bro, an egg, <laughs> a egg was like a mass of liquid inside of a shell. <laughs> that was one of the worst projectiles to learn how to throw. <laughs> I used to hate when I was finna hit a nigga and, and, and the motherfucker would bust in me air. Like I had an arm, so I would be, and that motherfucker just blow, blow the pieces in the air. Shit, I'm like, fuck, that was my last egg. <laughs> That should be mad as hell. That motherfucker hit your ass in the face with an egg. And, and then you say you throw that motherfucker with force G. With force G and that motherfucker. How you gonna throw that shit in you my friend? See, like, you had, see, we, we, we was on the ambush How the fuck is that, bro? Eggs. You had to ambush somebody with eggs. You couldn't, like, right. be, be, like, hurling eggs and shit. You know, that shit wouldn't work out. It wasn't rocks. <laughs> you know, snowballs was, was terrible. You know, that reminds me of a story, The Wire, on, on the shorties. Like, I want to say maybe season three. Season mm-hmm. three or season four of The Wire. When uh when all them shorties, you know, they was all together and they had a little beef with the other little neighborhood cause yeah, them rocks be Oh yeah, I remember that. Here. And they was fucking with one of them and they was in the alley and them niggas had pissed in balloons. <laughs> they made like water balloons. That shit was nasty as fuck. And this nigga tried to throw a Wayman, the prettiest boy out of all of the little, little you know, Weebay son. Yeah. Get good hair, earrings, all this shit, right? Man, this nigga tried to throw that balloon and that shit. <laughs> Bust on him. He said, "Man, I pissed myself." And them niggas <laughs> and like, they whooped his get ass. Them they tried to, but he got away. Everybody else got whooped bad. He didn't get caught. He got that bad niggas ice cream afterwards. You know what I mean? But he didn't get touched, and he was the main reason they got whooped anyway. Yeah, I'm like, man, this is crazy. That's a terrible childhood. Like, I ain't. I'm glad I ain't never get whooped for none of my homies. That was a good ass series, though. I did get stole on though, but fuck with one of my guys. He was a BD. He was cool as hell, Michael Wissy, man. Shout out Michael Wissy, man. That he nigga. stole on you? No, nah, man, I'm hanging with Michael Wissy ass. He coming to fuck with some bitches around our hood, you know. Well, some some young ladies, not not bitches, you know. They was young then, little whores in training. What the fuck? And uh, they mama was never there, so they would. <laughs> For real, they mama like was never like there. That shit made it better. Oh, he went from bitches <laughs> to whores in tra- to, to whores in training to, train. to little whores in training. Okay, come on. <laughs> Because, you know, every time they mama would go, and it was two of them, so they mamas worked like these night and evening jobs, and they mamas had some of the nicest cribs. Shout out to they mamas. Shout out to working mamas who had nice cribs and their kids being there having parties, you know. Damn. Damn, bro. Wrong one, wrong one. There we go. That was it. Yeah. Shout out to everybody who got nice cribs yeah. you know, and, and got teenagers. Bro. Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. So, you, so it, it, when you said that, it made me think about it made me. It made me think about the the the, uh, the story uh, in the paper about the the police chief Eddie um, Johnson. Eddie Johnson, right? Mm-hmm. So Eddie Johnson, you know, he he got caught. I guess drunk behind the wheel. Sleep, sleep, sleep. You know what I'm saying? But then uh, that's fucked up. But then all that shit came out about him fucking around with the chick, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy though? What that chick used to live down the street from. Used to live down the street from me. No bullshit. So she got like four, bro. She got like four fucking sisters. All of them was cold. When we was growing up, wow. all of them was cold. All of them wow. was cold. They used to, and it's, and it's crazy because my my cousin Faye, my cousin Faye, and my cousin Nicole, they they could they could tell you this shit to this day. They used to always get into it with them. 
Wow. They used to always get into it. And I remember the one that allegedly, yeah, allegedly. fuck with uh, Eddie. Eddie Jones. She was the coldest one, G. Yeah. She was the coldest one. Like, they, bro. Shout out Eddie, man. He had taste at least. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's bro. I love if you're going to cheat, listen. If you're going to cheat, cheat up. That, if 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 man. fellas, if y'all gonna cheat, cheat up. You know, never lose. Let 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 the ladies not have this stigma. Of, you should have saw what this nigga got caught. Oh, you hear fuck like, anything? Yeah, yeah, like man, come on. You don't want to hear that. No. You don't want to hear that. Like don't you don't want? Yeah, cheat up. Like women <laughs> already cheat up. Like they they, they, they the, when they cheat, they, they already been working it out. Like you know, they got a place yeah. to live with them. You know, because this shit just make you feel so much worse if you see the nigga they cheated with. You'd be like him. They be uglier, but they might have this something. Fucking like, for real? But, yeah, you can't, you can't, you know. Like, damn, was I really not, was I really not on my shit that much? Or you just, or you just out there? You see what I'm saying? Man, see, um, that's what it be looking like. You just was thirsty. <laughs> just you know, thirsty you just, you just, you over here fucking on this fat <laughs> motherfucker. And, and, all right, you go fuck up the crib for this, huh? This is what you want. <laughs> so, you, you standing your dumb ass there like, yeah. I like her. At least she don't. She don't. Uh, she don't be talking shit to me. You ain't supposed to let her know this, right? Right. <laughs> Bro, get Rasputia back in the crib. <laughs> don't let <laughs> Hey, did you check out the latest episode of that, uh, that Wu Tang? Nah. <laughs> I, that's something. That's something I'm gonna probably binge watch. You need to. When my um, when, you know, my son come back from college, he said he wanted to check it out too. You need to, man. I, I, bro, at first, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Not to, not to even yeah. cut you off. It's kind of hard for me to watch certain like um, certain shits like that, and and, and it be the actors. You know what I mean? It's like if the actors ain't giving me the right vibe, it's hard for me to watch that shit. You know what I mean? It's like my now, unless y'all keep saying, "Man, check this out, check this out," then I'm gonna watch. It. I'm gonna give it a chance. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. evidently it must be good. You know what I mean? The, but it is though. Like, that shit is good, bro. I yeah. mean, like, and 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 even like I, like, give, I ain't I, watching Power Book. I ain't you know certain shit. Just uh, I'm just not watch. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like acting, I'm like burnt out. Acting. <laughs> I mean, like the the acting is key. The acting yeah. is key, and the actor is a key. Um, the uh, the writing of the show is is very important. That's why I, that's why I always like that show. Uh, Insecure. I like that. Um, is RZA. Like, um, rightness. Does Rizzo got something? Uh, to do? I think it definitely. I mean, okay. like the, I think the whole clan got some, okay. Like right. The whole clan got something to do with it. Um, that's what's up. But dude, I think oh, I believe old dirty bastards' son. Okay, is playing him. I hope he is. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think that's his son. I think so. But anyway, dude, he wow. I, 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 I do got to say this much, man. Like, and it, this is why I bring this up. I mean. I'm not really giving out no spoilers because everybody know the story of Wu Tang, but it's 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 a part in there, bro, mm -hmm. that RZA is basically the one who's in. RZA is basically the one that makes a decision on what solo deals they get, right? Okay. So Def Jam is offering a certain amount of money for Method Man, right? But they also offering a certain they offering a certain amount of money for Old Dirty Bastard, right? Mm -hmm. But Methods, I think Methods, Methods deal was just said like one hundred and seventy five thousand, right? right? Old Dirties was one hundred and fifty thousand. That was from Def Jam, right? Right. Electra comes along and says we will give Old Dirty one hundred and fifty thousand as well. There's like, but in twenty years he can have the rights to his music. He can mm. have the rights to his music, bro. So here's the thing though, motherfucking RZA, and I'm telling it, RZA. RZA made the decision. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And RZA made the decision without even asking Old Dirty. You know what I'm saying? So, As he probably should have. I don't think Dirty would have been in the right head space or knowledgeable. Who's to say? But I'm going to go out on a limb and say Old Dirty wouldn't have gave a fuck. I think Old Dirty probably would have went with... In, in, with Def Jam. He would have went with whoever was paying him. Well, the thing, the, thing the, is, the thing is, on the show... Old Dirty, like they 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 make it known. Old Dirty have been saying for the longest, like I really want to be on Dev Jam. I really want to be on Dev okay. Jam. So yeah, he would have went. Hey yo, we gotta take a break real quick. We coming right back. Hey yo, shout out to everybody out there that's uh, watching uh, Wu series on Hulu off somebody else's account. Cause your ass don't want to pay yeah, the description. Yeah. Free account, shit. free Netflix. <laughs> Jaja Smith, Zevin Heaven at gmail.com. Zevin Heaven. 
at Instagram, Zev in Heaven, Facebook, Jaja Smith, Facebook, Jaja Smith 20, Instagram. I have the cupcakes that you need. I have the cupcakes that you want and all the flavors, any flavor that you can imagine. Chocolate chip cookies, any type of sweet treats. That's why it's seven sweet treats, y'all. Um, mobile, if you want to call me, area code 872-225-2680. That's 872-225-2680. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are back at the Shits Podcast. And um, we were just talking about uh, the Wu-Tang uh, series on Hulu. And my and nigga uh, Dirty, man. So, yeah, man, like I said, dude, um, so, it, you know, it was, it was a deal that Def Jam was offering for Method and Dirty, mm -hmm. but the only difference was that Dirty would get his... Uh, Electric was saying Dirty would get the rights to his music back in like 20 years and, and RZA made the, the decision for him, but I was consulting old Dirty. And, and the crazy part about it is, like I was saying, man, to this day, that shit played out well for his family. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because he ain't here no more. Exactly. Right, right. And he wouldn't have, I don't think he would have been looking or cognizant of that like 20 years from now. You know what I mean? Like, what about, you know, you know it's like you got to think for the future, especially in that game. You know, if, if you if you lucky enough to be a fucking old dirty, you know right. what I mean, and have Brooklyn Zoo and, and, and have a fucking cut with Mariah, right. you know, and a, and a couple more cuts with a couple more big fucking R&B names, you know what I mean? Like, shit, you, you definitely getting some residuals. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? 20 years from now, your shit's still playing in clubs. Bro, me and Mariah <coughs> go back like babies and pacifiers. Old dirt doll, no. like that shit is Them still checks, getting bro. played in Las Vegas, bro. in Miami. You know, any little club or or like you know uh, performance and shit to just entertain the crowd real quick. Oh yeah, them checks. DJs bro. throwing that shit on. Them shit, that's them. Them shits is checks, bro. Big checks, my nigga. Big checks. Big royalty joints. Big checks. Big checks. Do you um, think that should be? I think that should be a prerequisite for yeah. a manager to try to get his artist, or for the artist to try to get their their right. You yeah. mean like after yeah. a certain amount of time? It's, but it's funny, it's, bro. It's funny that you said that, man. Because I was just thinking about the whole evolution of the business. Period. You know what I'm saying? Because like nowadays, shit ain't the same. Like, mm. is 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 it really a such thing? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm asking this question because I'm I don't I don't fully know is. Are there still A and R's? You no, know what I'm saying? No, like they got rid of them. I, I mean, heard, like I nowadays, like that. yeah, motherfuckers still have managers. But even with that shit, sometimes you got a lot of artists out here who don't even have a fucking manager because they feel like they don't need one. They don't need them. You know what I'm saying? They, they probably got everything, or they got they they got their boy or somebody that's real close to them. <clears throat> you know, taking care of the business for them, and they and they they hit them off with a certain amount of you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's like man, nowadays with 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 the rise of YouTube and the shit you can do on these phones and the shit you can do on your computer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You think about, do you, like you, you got your rights right there. As long, yeah. as long as you, as long as you, 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 uh, you copywriting your shit, you know what I'm saying? You make sure you go through ASCAP, BMI or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers got their rights right there today, to today, to today music, you know? So I yeah. think, I think it changed. I think it changed for the better. You know what I'm saying? So nowadays is, Nowadays, it's it's like more do it yourself. Right. But it makes me act. It, it makes me ask you this question, bro. Who do you think is controlling the entertainment business now more than anything? Who do I think is controlling? It's controlling the music, the, like oh, music. The music, the music aspect. Um, still the fans, the fans, the consumers of the music are still okay. I think the biggest. Uh, still leading the the music trend right now is like YouTube. Like more people are just going straight to YouTube, yeah. and, and you know, listening through YouTube. And and what I didn't know was that uh, like my young homie, he was going by was it streams? Mm -hmm. I think it was streams. So he was listening to songs, certain artists, and he was like, "Damn, they got a song that." you know, uh, got downloaded. There's so many downloads. Yeah. He was like, this shit gotta be hot. 
and he was checking shit out that was like the most downloaded. So yeah. he would go to these sites and hit most downloaded yeah. and just scan through that shit. Yeah. And I'm like, this is how you listen to music? He's like, yeah. And if I don't like the shit, I just go to the next song. It's like 30 fucking songs. So right. I, I won't be in the car to listen to 30 new songs from nobody. Right, right. Wow, See, but, but you know what, dude? I don't really think... I don't really think that should be accurate, man, because like I see songs that's like that got a lot of downloads or a lot of streams to it. Mm -hmm. And it should kind of be whack, bro. Yeah, and it's who's downloading it. Right. So still, I still say the fans of the music are not the representation of the music. You always got to remember that because most people that buy your music don't even look like you. They don't know shit about what you talking about, but mm-hmm. it's good to hear from them. They like you. They're a fan of you, right? Um, shit, prime example, most most consumers of music are white people. Mm. You think so? Buyers? Fuck yeah. They've been buying tapes, CDs, all that shit for years. But I don't... I, I don't we, we will bootleg some shit. Like, I, I've bought bootlegs off the L. Like, when I used to take the L, the shit, because it'll be the new shit, yeah, I and I know... It ain't out yet, you know what I mean? So I buy this shit for $5. And it might be five songs on there that's really on the shit, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, I, I think that's, I think that's changed now. You see what I'm saying? I think Drastically, like, because number one, we don't have any physical form. Now, there's still people out here trying to get you to donate some money. Yeah, for a CD. Yeah, for they CD. Like, nigga, right? I ain't even got a CD player in my car, I don't car, have bro. a CD player in my car, I don't bro. know why I'm playing this That's my new set, excuse, so. <laughs> like, I mean, it ain't even no excuse. Like, I literally don't have a CD player in my car, bro. Like, yeah, so. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I commend you for the effort right. of putting your shit on the CD, but. Now that you gotta think like that shit is lost. You did it for what, bro? It's lost, and they punched <laughs> up three hundred with covers and everything oh. trying to get this shit out here. They hit me all the time at Walmart, Targets, and shit. But the music game, like you just described, why do you need a label unless it's for distribution to help my shit get out? You know what I mean to a, to a mass of people. Yeah. And now you don't even need that because everything is streamed. So the most damaging right. thing about right. music is the streaming game. How do you get money off of streams? Because I can download a song without paying for the fucking song. So how do you as an right. artist get, get money, money off of being on music or or you know all these other you I'm on, on I, Spotify, I go to Apple like Music Apple or some music, shit yeah. and I can download all the little baby shit I want to, but I can't hear it unless I'm on Wi-Fi. Now that's crazy as fuck. Right. Like my, <laughs> so I gotta get one of my shorties. To Wait, but you can no, but you can, but you can download it to your phone and it'll just be stored in your phone, though, right? Oh, I don't know. I ain't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can download it to your phone and it'll just be stored in your phone, so you don't need Wi-Fi. See, you know. I ain't. But know but you shit. brought up a you brought up a very good question, which was how do they get paid? How you getting like how you how you getting paid off of it? You know they what I'm saying? And, and if you if you look it up. It would be like, um, like pennies. Oh yeah, on the, on they, the string. They, it's like twenty five cent or some shit. Lower than that, like twelve cent. Lower than twelve yeah. cent. It's not even a cent. See what I'm saying? So how do you get money? Yeah, bro. Oh, you would have to get a hundred million streams to get like a thousand dollars or something. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. how how is that shit possible? But this is the age. But that, bro, a motherfucker told me. A motherfucker told me, and I thought it was I, I thought it was a smart thing to do, and I don't understand why people don't do it. They was like going to a service like Bandcamp, bro. You know what I'm saying? You go to a service like Bandcamp where, you know, independent artists they can put they they can put their music on Bandcamp uh and they can sell it for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They can they can sell a they can sell that one song, that single for a dollar. That ain't that ain't hurting nobody. That's smart too. That's smart as hell. I feel like, dude, a hundred thousand is a hundred thousand dollars. There you go. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I feel like, dude, if 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 I heard some shit, like if if somebody told me that the only way I can I can find this song is if I go online and pay a dollar for, I go do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's a fucking dollar, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nipsey Hustle charged how much for that album? He that that's how he tape. got on that one year a hundred dollars. Was that a hundred dollar mixtape or a thousand dollars? No, I think it was a hundred dollar mixtape. I, I don't know. I gotta Google. It was some shit. shit like this. Is how he got on. Like he sold a mixtape for a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, and everybody in the industry was fucking with it because that was some unheard of shit. Number one, right? Like I right, like like we heard of you nip, you know right. nip the crip or whatever, but your shit better be banging for a hundred bucks, and it was. So that's when they really started fucking with it. So yeah. I, I I think that. Uh, 
I think that smart. What happened is like everybody, everybody got hip to the fact that they can get their shit online quick. But the thing about it was that don't necessarily that, that don't necessarily mean it's the best thing to do. You see what I'm saying? Because unless you just strictly monetizing your shit in every avenue, and you got hot shit now, are you going to be able to compete? How is your How is your competitiveness with the with the with the uh, with the NBA young boys? How's your competitiveness uh, with, with young Dirks? Yeah. With the Dirks and, and, and futures and shit like that. Right, These are established right. artists that's rocking shit. We're gonna be right back, y'all. Right. Yo, we're gonna take a break real quick. Hey, yo, shout out to all the artists out there, man, that's putting in their hard work, man. Don't on stop. Daily, man, on, day, on a daily basis. Can't stop. Don't stop, y'all. Don't like, stop. Like Puffy said, take that, take that, take that. It's the shits. Fridays, 9 a.m. Catch us at www.theblock105. It's the shits. We coming through. Right way. There's a moose, ma. We are back at the shits podcast. Hey, yo. If y'all in this in Illinois, Chicago area, whatever, November 6th, y'all need to head out to Magoo's, 6550 South Menard Avenue. Uh, Cause it's gonna be a live taping of the podcast, y'all. So let let, let, let me tell y'all what's gonna go down. I, I, I really wasn't supposed to let the cat out the bag, man. Mm. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit about what's going on, man. We got comedians, man. Mm-hmm. We got rappers. Mm-hmm. We got singers. Of course, of course. King we, be singing. King King singing. He be singing and shit. King said he be singing um, and shit. So we gonna have a couple people up there who be singing. We might hit a cipher. We, we, freestyle session. We might, we might hit a freestyle session. We're gonna do the four for four. Y'all don't even know how we. Y'all don't even know how we're gonna do it yet. But we're gonna do the four for four. We mm-hmm. might do a. We might have somebody come up do first of all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gonna be live. It's gonna be a live taping of the yeah. podcast, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like I said, if y'all in the area, slide through November six. Doors open up at eight p.m. and we'll be going to never, man, whenever. Man, shout out to Yoga Pants. I just thought about this. Mm-hmm. Like, this is something. Is the Chicago podcast, Chicago Clubhouse, gonna be in the, in the building? Uh, I would hope so. Man, we gonna be talking about. We gonna get they ass up there, talk some shit about some sports real quick. Man, let them let's... give us their reviews for the week. That's what we gotta start getting for them. Some picks. I gotta start getting some picks. I'm on FanDuel. Mm-hmm. So any of y'all fans on FanDuel, y'all make sure y'all hit up Chicago Clubhouse podcast. You know, see what they talking about for your picks and shit weekly. I'm making them, you know, do a job even if they don't do the fucking job. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all got a new job now because if our listeners start hitting y'all up, y'all better come through. Exactly. Exactly. But they will. They some cool motherfuckers. They my people. Um, shout out to Chicago Clubhouse Sports Podcast. Uh, you know, they think they know about sports, but they really don't know shit. They don't know shit. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> <laughs> we just told y'all to hit them up. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we just fuck, man. They cool as hell, though. Nah, that's they, a good guy. They know what they're talking about. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, you heard about this shit, man, with um the mayor of Dalton? Everybody pissed off at her? Well, no, I haven't heard about So let me her. tell you real quick. No, let me tell you I real quick. So What happened? I'm she, trying to move to Dalton. She hired a formerly incarcerated child sex offender to inspect community homes. She hired him. Yeah, she that's hired. a big fucking no no. Like, and and here's the problem. You know what you're saying that that kind of it don't irk me, but it's like, should I expect it or should I not expect it? You keep saying she, she. Ah, uh, don't go there, bro. God don't go there. <laughs> don't bro. go there, bro. Wait, <laughs> let me make a point. Okay, okay. How does a woman hire a sex offender, former or ex, or you know, you? <laughs> Out of all people, now a man can slip up and hire a sex offender. Why? Why? What's because the difference? What's the difference? He's not going to be. I don't think men are as thorough as women in, in instances. I don't think. Okay. I think women are more thorough in, in they, their selection. In selection of life, period. They okay. select men sometimes fucked up, but they have thorough shit going on. A woman know when you cheating. A woman knows how to find shit in your phone. She know how to unlock your fucking phone. She know how to unlock your motherfucking password. It's nothing a woman can't get it. A motherfucking woman will open your eye while you sleeping and hold your motherfucking phone up so your shit can unlock. That's what a motherfucking woman can do. So how you telling me that a woman is capable of doing all that and she did not? A so, sex offender? This one of the easiest motherfuckers in the world to look up. 
He's so, on record. He for, and, and, and he's actually registered on the Illinois State Police child sex offender list. He's actually registered. That's a big fucking no no, ma'am. So here's the thing though, bro. Jesus. I I, I believe Age Christ. <laughs> I believe I believe she defended she defended her decision. And she said that Buddy paid his dues to society. Now, let me say this also. Let me say this also. Let me also motherfucking goddamn it say this. Because there's some cases out here on some men that don't deserve these fucking cases also. There's some cases on some men out here that's, that's wrong. It's some men walking around here with a sexual motherfucking charge that they fucking can't get off. And a lot of these motherfuckers pled guilty so they didn't have to sit in jail for this dumb shit. So, um, so hold on. So let me say this part. So here's the thing. He this is said, crazy. He so what if he's one of those guys? What he's, if he's a good guy? He spent 24 years in prison Ooh. for connection to a rape incident involving a 13-year-old mm. and a 14-year-old. And he was 17 at the time. So, I mean, like, I, I only say that, bro, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not justifying what happened. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just telling the details. So with that being said... It makes it makes you think. Did he pay his dues to society? Yeah, Can he did twenty four years, bro. Twenty four years to be locked up in prison. But do I have to put you in a job when you coming into a motherfucking house? That's that's where See the what I'm discretion. Saying? See what I'm discretion, saying? Discretion, discernment comes in. Right. And how are all? This is the mayor. This is the question for the mayor. How are the residents? See, this is what I'm going to ask. The residents if, I'm, if, I'm a, if I'm a constituent, though, if I'm yeah. if I'm underneath the mayor, if I'm in the building department, woo this, woo that, I got to take the mayor out. I got to holler at the mayor one on one. How are the residents going to feel when they find out this motherfucker they was pissed. an ex? No, this is what I have to ask the mayor. Oh. I got to talk with my boss. Yeah. I got to put you up on game. You looking bad. You go. Do you know how bad? Do you realize what kind of shit storm? That's the, that's the word that shit they would use, man. right? That, what kind of shit storm you going to uh, uh, in, in, invoke yourself on if you let, if, the, if this motherfucker ever gets found out that he was a formal sex and he did 24 years, that's a long time for any fucking crime. Right. You see what I'm saying? But like I said, where, 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 where are your people? That's, where that's are a, your people, Dern? Okay. Where are your people? Okay, so that was my question too. I, I thought about that because I was like, look, at the end of the day, she's the one that makes the decision that says this happens, this happens. However, I know you got a cabinet of motherfuckers that's saying, hey, that probably ain't the best decision. You, you can do it, but I'm telling you don't. Like, I'm going to tell you don't do it, and I'm going to tell you why. Right. Now, you do this shit, it's on you. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. I'm just gonna say oh, I don't shit. know nothing about it. You know, whatever, whatever. That you is know. going under the bus. No, nah, you you can't you can't see. This is my thing. Um, it's certain things that that I'm not capable of doing. You know what I mean? Like like if I fuck with you, I fuck with you, right? Yeah. If I came to you and told you don't do this shit, I'm still not gonna throw you under the bus when the camera get in front of me. I'm not gonna be like, well, I told her and she did this, <laughs> and you know, yeah. hey, told her, we see what happens. You can't do that. <laughs> You right. see what I'm saying? So I would never do that, but I would, I would yeah, also. One I'd just be like, man, like, you know, but it's really a bad circumstance for everybody. The guy was a good worker. You know what I mean? Like, he did do his job. It's just unfortunate that this background is is like this dark cloud over him. You know what I mean? So you, but you, are you, I would spin that shit. You said, you said a couple of things that, that stood out. You said, one, like sometimes it is people that that's locked up for stuff that they really didn't do and they just played guilty to, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, so so in a situation like that, do people like do people give motherfuckers benefit of the doubt? Nine times no, out of ten, bro. they not, not. Not bro. Nine times out of ten, that's they not. Hard, bro. That's a hard fucking case to have somebody be around you with, and 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 you have no prior even if you got prior knowledge of them like you got family members that rape motherfuckers you don't know it but even if you do know it you ain't finna be around them motherfuckers you're not finna have them nowhere around your yo 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 people right if they didn't rape somebody that you know about so it's like that's hard bro that's that's a hard pill to swallow and then another pill to swallow is like i said if he didn't actually do it like it's people out here that they get charged with rape and didn't actually rape you know, they, they just got caught in a sexual act and their father's disappointed, their mother's disappointed, somebody is disappointed or gonna be disappointed. You see what I'm saying? And the first thing they say is to say, well, they rating me. 
Like, that's wrong as fuck. You was a freak. You wanted it. And now we get caught by your daddy or some shit, and your daddy don't approve of you having No slippery. daddy go approve of their daughter getting smashed in his house. Period. You know what I mean? That's so you get slippery, caught. That's a slippery slope, right? But there, so bro. many football that's players. Slippery slope, bro. So many college athletes, primarily black, but unfortunately, a lot of other white college, uh, you know, baseball players and football players have been getting brought up on charges of rape. You know, they be drugging girls and doing all yeah. kind of shit. But a lot of times in college, if they get caught, if a girl gets caught, one of her main defenses, and I've heard this shit in Carbondale, when I was down in Carbondale, if you get caught in a rape investigation, you were immediately removed out of school. Right. You know what I mean? So your whole purpose of going there was like fucked up, and you couldn't go back to school until the determination was done on that case, bro. Now, if you if you got found not guilty or whatever, then they allowed you back to school. They didn't hold right. you back. But immediately you were removed, bro. So they taking actions like that. Because of previous incidents that happened in Carbondale. So, you know, you can kind of understand schools being liable for their for they young ladies. And we need everybody to be liable for yeah. their young ladies. We're going to be right we'll back. Take a break, y'all. And shout out to, I ain't going to even fuck with that one like that. Hey, y'all, uh, it's the shit. <laughs> what up, ladies and gentlemen? It's American Dream, the American Nightmare, the Heartbreak Kid, Young Baca. And when I come to Chicago, I check in, I get on the radio with the Shits Podcast. One more time, man. Give a big shout out to the Shits Podcast. Young Baca Productions, man. Hollis, we out here. You can say that. <laughs> you gonna say it. Mm-hmm. We are we are back at the shit podcast, man. But we had the shooting the shit, starting some shit, or picking up what shit left off. And tonight, I really think we just really just started some shit. Cause man, let's go. We got I got some questions too. I got a serious question like Dave Chappelle. But you go you go first with yours, D, because your shit was heavy. Or oh, you want me to go first? I go just first. Just say the shit. So look, should it be a crime? Not a crime. A Not fu- a crime. No, a crime. Is it a crime? Not a crime. Boop, boop, boop. Should it happen? Boop, boop. Should should should, boop, should, boop, boop. should we should we it, it should we still be looking at people that are up in age? To make decisions if they're not gonna really be around that long, like motherfuckers in their seventies and eighties and yeah, shit like it should that, be a right, limit, bro? It should be a right. Limit. Okay, that's the question. That's the definitely, question that we ask. I definitely feel. Okay, it. but here's the thing, though. So you would think about it: the older you get, the more you know, right? That's tutor, how it should be tutor and 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 mentor, but the workload but make the way for somebody else hand it to somebody else. That that see. It's 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 been known in our community, especially as a title, is is held as power. It's a lot of old preachers, right? It's a lot of old politicians that really need to hand that torch down and mentor these young people to have the youth like they once did, and they were in office thirty years. That's enough. Okay. If you can't talk, you're suffering from Tourette's and, and other things. You should still be active. That's a, that's a, bro, no, that's I'm not. I'm not that's, saying that's anything. Mess, that's listen, some mental shit. Listen, this is a hard job, and 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 I just would. I'm not telling anybody that has any kind of ailment to not do it. I just would like to see somebody young in give the younger people an opportunity that also has that drive, that determination, because they are more in tune with what's going on. It's no way a 70-year-old man, 70-year-old woman can know what's going on with the 15-year-olds. That's not true. That is true. What 70-year-olds do you know that's that's in tune with teenagers and young adults? Not many. Al Sharpton, I would would love to call Al Sharpton and ask Al Sharpton how many teenagers to young men are he in tune with besides his family members? This is what I would like Al Sharpton. And if Al Sharpton can answer that, guess what? That will influence other older men or elders to start conversating and bro. getting in tune, bro. This is what we need. Who do we learn from? Our parents and people in front of us. Exactly. The motherfuckers is older than us, right? Not all the time. It used to, we, we did. We did. Our generation did. Right. But that's a lost art. See, when people move and they get power and they get positions that that almost hold them in a higher echelon uh-huh. and they still with us, but they don't, you know, talk to us and inform us and keep us on the right path and pass down things. Your son is supposed to go to college and come back home and work for one of our companies. This or, is how Or start his own. Or start his own company. This right. is this is what college used to be about. Right. We've we a lot of people have have flipped it and made their child go to college, and it wasn't a serious move for them because they had no plan after college. So college is the first line of debt 
that we introduce our children to a lot of times because if they don't come home and have a job waiting for them or if they don't find a job or find a career in this this degree, which they are supposed to do, right? When, right. Whenever you have a, a degree, it's supposed to be towards a career, right? not just a job. Right. You see what I'm saying? So college is, is, to me, one of the first lines of debt that young people are forced to carry after graduating college. Now, there's no guarantee that right. they're going to have a career in it. You see okay. what I'm saying? Okay, okay, so what we were saying, okay, we're back, back, back to the point. Now, back to when, the when elders. You, when... Now, not surrendering. I don't. I don't think like this. In my opinion, I don't think it is. I don't think it should be an issue of age. I think it should be an issue of mental capability. You can have motherfuckers and effectiveness. And, no, uh, and, right, and effectiveness. effectiveness. Yeah. bro. You can have motherfuckers in their thirties, or as we cl- clearly see with the fucking decision mm-hmm. that was made out in Dalton, and motherfuckers in their thirties that may not make the best decisions, and they're young. You see what I'm saying? And they're young. So And the first thing the old heads go say is she was too young for that position. Or she or she wasn't seasoned enough. Or she wasn't seasoned enough. But exactly. here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. Like I said, even even with her being a person, even with her being a person who makes the decision, you still should have a cabinet of people that got some sense. You know what I'm saying? Some somewhere along the line, someone should have said, hey. I know you just decided to get this dude a chance and whatever, 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 but that might not be the best job. That might not be the best position. job to give him. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Position. That may not be the best position to give him. And not- I would like, I would like, I would like if she hasn't stepped forward, I would like for her to come forward on our show. Hell yeah. Give us, a, give us an interview with her because we ain't bashing the lady or nothing. I, I don't want it to look like we bashing her, sound like we bashing her. You know what? I'm just I, looking I put it like, out there. Uh, so, so for anybody that, that, that listened to the Shiz podcast, uh, and you know the mayor, Tiffany Hate, ha- Tiffany Henyard, Tiffany Henyard, Tiffany Henyard. Hey, we would love to have you a guest uh, on the podcast because we believe that it's it's more than one side to the story, and we Definitely. and also we commend you for becoming the I believe the youngest the youngest woman to hold that position. So that's that that's, that's history. That's history she right there. History you know what I'm saying? So the thing is it's not it's not to bash. Yeah. It's it's just to really give you the opportunity to speak on it yourself and you know what I'm saying for us to find out what was your thought process and for the people out in Dalton to find out what was your thought process because we do understand people need a second chance. Yeah, everybody needs a second you know? chance. We're not saying that. So I, I commend a brother for coming out of jail and doing something positive or trying to do something positive. Hopefully he didn't do nothing wrong while working. If he did everything right, he should still be given another chance. You know, the the whole employment. Right. Now, you know, that, that position is 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 controversial. And that's it's why sensitive, we even, bro. Yeah, it's a sensitive topic. motherfuckers coming in your crib. It's a sensitive topic, and that's why we even able to speak on it because right. – of his background that makes it sensitive. But if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have shit to talk about, at least on this subject. Right. Yo, so with with, with that being said, man, I'm uh I'm, I'm I'm turning the mic over to my man Bubba Ball. Oh and, uh, shit. <laughs> and he about to hit y'all with the underlay for the overplay. Check it out, man. So you know, I, I like diving deep Ooh. into um certain she things. Said. Yeah, I, I get deep, <laughs> balls deep. <laughs> So I'm bubble ball. I'm finna get balls deep real quick. So here are some things that are holding us back on the self-defeat tree. Now, the self-defeat tree is made up of a lot of different arms. And on these arms and these tentacles of this tree, it has no leaves on it. It's just a bare tree. And all the way down in the roots, is uh, it's at least four things that, I want to say a large population of us are harboring and walking around, and this can be possibly stopping your blessings because you're harboring these things around. Fear, resentment, jealousy, mistrust, guilt. These are all the roots below the ground. These are the roots of the self-defeat tree. I said fear, resentment, jealousy, Mistrust, guilt, hostility, and self-pity. Mm. Those are things that people are harboring, walking around with, stopping you. So only stopping you is not stopping the person that you're mad at. Now we're going up into the tree. We have theft, drug addiction, defiancy, slander, you know. Mental illness, which is heavy. Crime, 
lewdness, alcoholism. Lewdness is like pulling your penis out and shit like that, right? Yeah, showing like, your showing, showing your body your parts yeah, in showing, public. Yeah. Nasty motherfucker. You know, all of those things people are doing, you know, theft, dependency, being dependent on people, you know, always needing somebody, the needy person, alcoholism. You know, so it's 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 very hard. Now the tree of life, this is what the tree of life consists of. I'm gonna hit the roots first. Charity. How many of y'all do some kind of charity? No matter if it's in the form of helping somebody out, giving rides, you know, whatever. Charity. Friendship. How many of y'all are good friends to people? Forgiveness. Have you forgiven somebody that you was mad at, that did something to you, that, you know, they went on with their life, y'all, you know, you went your way. You still don't, you know, you don't fuck with them too much, but have you forgiven them for what he did? Gratitude, kindness, love, warmth, and trust. Can you trust somebody? You know what I mean? So if you if you could trust people, that's that's a good sign. Those are the roots. It's the roots of the of the life tree. Now we're getting into the leaves and the branches. Fulfillment, justice, commitment, freedom. Joy, creativity, that's big, acceptance, self-motivation, all these things come from you being in a good place in life, right, so when you go to the gym, if you're going to the gym, you work out in the morning, you ride your bike, Whatever you do to start your day out, especially if you work, you know, for yourself. It's a beautiful thing when you can be happy and enjoy life. So remember this, people. Your attitude about life is controlling your life. Let's let's live. Let's live. Let's really live. And to live life is to be happy. Find some happiness. Love y'all. We're going to be back next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my man, Bubba Ball, with the underlay for the overplay. Yo. We appreciate everybody that tuned in. And like For I sure. said, if uh, if anybody got a uh, connect with the mayor of Dalton, like it's, hey, we, 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 we would love to have you on the podcast and give you the opportunity to speak your truth and to speak to the people and let the people know what you got planned for Dalton because we got faith in you. You know what I'm saying? We want to we wanna support you, you know? Um, right. Also, y'all hit up the website, theshitspodcast.com. Yo, Blah. November 6th. Blah. It's going down in Magoo's. I can't say it enough, y'all. Brat. It's going down in Magoo's. Live taping of the Shits Podcast. 6550 South Bernard Avenue at Magoo's. Mm. November 6th. Y'all need to be there. It starts at 8 p.m. when we going in teal. In Chicago, nigga. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, independent artists, send, on, send those MP3s in the dope music shits yeah. at gmail.com. Get your shit played. Hey, y'all, we out here we for out. the night. What up, DJ Cheese? We coming through. We on our way. Hit up uh, day twenty one. Uh, Jaja, we coming through there too. We out. It's the shit. <laughs>